In polar coordinates, you have two-dimensional space, perhaps x and y, and you define an angle, theta, which gives you a length in two-dimensional space. But you can also have an angle which gives you a volume in three-dimensional space, and that's a solid angle. And that's what I'm going to go over with you right now. Let me draw an XYZ coordinate system. And on that XYZ coordinate system, I will draw one octant of a sphere. And within that octant, there's a piece of a surface. And this piece of surface is on the surface of the eighth of a sphere. There's a radius r, an angle theta made with the z axis. This angle theta goes from zero down to pi, so that we can sweep this all the way down to the negative z axis. And there will be another angle I'm about to define for us here. Dropping this down and projecting it into the xy plane, so this edge right here is this edge. It's the exact same length. These two dashed lines are the shadow of the radii onto the xy plane. And there's an angle phi, usually made with the x-axis, which can vary from 0 to 2 pi, as this entire conic section sweeps around the sphere. This length is r sine of theta, because it's exactly the same as this length up here. I don't want to draw it in, but it's the opposite to theta up here. And so this length right here is an arc length. It's the radius, r sine of theta, times this angle right here, which is a small increment in phi. You know that the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Now we can define these edges. This edge right here is an arc length of length r d theta, where d theta is a small increment in theta. And this length right here is defined down here, r sine theta d theta. So we're ready to write down what this area of the conic section is. I'll call it dA. It's the area of a rectangle. So you have r d theta times the other length. And this product is the differential solid angle. So that I can say dA is just r squared times the differential solid angle, which is sine theta, d theta, d phi. We can do a double check here. We can calculate the area of an entire sphere that is swept out by these angles. You can do that by integrating theta from 0 to pi, phi from 0 to 2 pi, of this dA. The phi integral is what you call a trivial integral because it's just the integral of the differential. So integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi is 2 pi. Pull out the r squared, it's not being integrated over. And you just have the integral of sine theta, d theta, from 0 to pi, which you immediately recognize as minus cosine. You have 4 pi r squared as the area of a sphere which we found by integrating the differential solid angle. So you can kind of think of solid angle as the area that you have when the radius equals 1 in units of whatever the radius is squared. What we'll call d omega, the differential solid angle. If I wanted to get the complete solid angle, maybe call it delta omega. So I'm as opposed to a differential d omega, delta omega is a larger sweep of solid angle. You can grade from theta initial to theta final, whatever you're sweeping through, and the same for phi. And you'll have the solid angle that is subtended. And the units for that solid angle, if you can call them units, is steradians. And I say if you can call it units, because it's more of a reminder than a unit, where 4 pi steradians is an entire sphere, abbreviated as big S low R. So let's do an example.
To find the solid angle that has been subtended by this annulus, which starts at theta initial of 1 radian and ends at theta final, 1.1 radian. A quick sketch of what this means, if we go back to the octant sphere, there's a ribbon that wraps all the way around from phi equals 0 to phi equals 2 pi. So it goes all the way around, not just in this one octant, but in four octants. It is located between theta equals 1 radian and theta equals 1.1 radian. And the question is, what is the solid angle that is subtended by that annulus? To find that, we need to integrate the differential from theta equals, I'm going to write 1.1 radian to 1 radian. You don't have to do this. It, it eliminates the need for accounting for minus signs. You can do it 1.1 to 1 or 1 to 1.1. So the solid angle should be a positive number. If you get odd finished and you have a negative number, it's positive. You don't subtend a negative solid angle, at least not in any applications I work on. So there's the d omega, sine theta d theta d phi. You integrate it over all of phi and from this theta equals 1.1 to 1. The phi integral is trivial. And the theta integral just gives minus cosine theta. So you can put that in your calculator. Make sure you're in radians mode. And you have 0.545 steradians. That's a solid angle, which relates then furthermore to volume elements. You know how an arc length, back to uh, one and two dimensions, an arc length, which manifests itself in two dimensions, can give you an area element. Just to draw a quick picture in polar coordinates, you might have your radius going through an angle d theta, and you have this arc length, which is r d theta. Well, if you continue that radius out a little bit, the distance dr, the area that you just subtended is the area of a rectangle, dr times r d theta, or rather r d r d theta. And so that's the area element in polar coordinates. In a three-dimensional space, you can take a solid area, like the area of this annulus, or the area of the conic section from the previous slide, and sweep it into a volume element. So that's the conic section, and extend these radii a little bit dr, and you have a volume element, which is the volume of a shoebox. dr times d area, dr times, and then the area was r squared sine of theta d theta d phi we had on a previous slide. And so that's the volume element in three dimensions, and the area element in two. All having to do with sweeping a solid angle for three dimensions and a single angle for two dimensions. We're going to apply this now to calculating the cross sections of scattering targets in our quantum mechanical problems.